Yeah, that's good. Yeah? Yeah, that is good. Okay, so we're going to talk about what making this film is actually being like for you. Sometimes you've suggested that it, there are moments in it which feel strange or, or don't feel quite comfortable. What's happened to you during the making of this film? How's it felt? I suppose my role in all mm. of this feels a bit strange because the whole idea when we started out was to, you know, I just wanted to be the hands for yeah. giving a platform to this particular group to be seen and heard where usually they're not. As someone who identifies as queer and is engaging in this intergenerational mm. dialogue mm. with you mm. especially and, and with all these other women that mm. we've spoken to, mm. it, you know, it can't help but be a very personal journey mm. and project. Mm. Jane, how are you? I'm good. And I'm loving this notebook. I'm loving this notebook of yours because it's just full of great ideas and images. What have I got there? What, uh, what's the problem with it? <laughs> what's the problem with it? Yeah, that I said before. Well, because... You're looking for images of old women, and you can't find any, or at least not any positive ones, but you've drawn some lovely ones instead. But no, I mean, this, this is the point, isn't it? You're writing about the fact that you can't find positive images of old women, so you can't find any positive <laughs> images of old women to put in your notes, which is, which is true, and we must make some. That's what we're going to do, isn't it? We're going to make some wonderful positive images of old women, because that's what we need to do. Comfortable? Yes, comfortable. Yes, comfortable. I'm 71 years old at the moment and I describe myself, how would I describe myself, as a researcher and writer, um, natural born storyteller, uh, old lesbian, subject of film. <laughs> I was in my mid-sixties, I suppose. Um, I was living on my own in a fairly remote part of England. I uh, wasn't getting a lot of um, intellectual stimulation, I guess. So I decided to see what it would be like to go back to university to go and study. So I went off to Birmingham and I did a year's master's degree in gender studies. We studied uh, feminist theory, we studied theories of masculinity, we looked at race with regard to gender, we looked at all sorts of things and as the year went through I was thinking and then we'll get to the lesbians and we didn't get to the lesbians really and in particular I began to be aware that I wasn't finding in all this, the whole of the second half of the course was about representation and what I was not finding was representations of women like me. I was having such a good time I, to my huge surprise, decided that I couldn't bear to stop. I wanted to do a PhD then. And I decided that having talked about the invisibility of older lesbians, my PhD would set out to do something about that invisibility, to make that community more visible than it is. <laughs> the, thing, the lovely thing about film, it's... Um, you know, you can just cut it up and throw bits away. Uh, and like we were just saying that um, she's going to have hours and hours and hours of this stuff. Um, and, and, and she's only going to have 20 minutes of it in the end. So I think we'll just pick our very best bits. Well, you will have. Believe me. Believe me. I, I can make you a star. You stick with me. Okay. okay. Speak to me again, Barbara. Right. One, two, three, four. Testing, testing. Yeah, and just wave your arms. Testing, up. testing, 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 testing. I'm 68. Uh, I'm in a committed partnership, civil partnership. For the last eight years, we've been together. 22 years. What do I do with my time? I like to do woodworking. It started when I was at school when I watched the boys go off to woodworking and metalwork and thought, why am I doing domestic science? 
please tell me what, what the hell I am doing, whisking up eggs and making cakes. I am just not interested. Needlework, I can see the point of that because that's like a, giving me a power tool, isn't it, in my hands. I think I can sum it up in one word as freedom. There is something about a piece of wood. Uh, when you hold it in your hands and you just take a piece off here and you put it through a machine that does a little bevel on it or something and it's you're in charge you are free to do what you like with it it doesn't matter if you muck it up because you just bin it or burn it I love it mm. I just love it mm. it's just it's become my passion apart mm. from mm. Louise it's become it's become what I do I think Okay, tell us when to start. When you're ready. I remember at university, somebody tried to uh, call a, a meeting to sort of, this was in 1968 or so, and um, a women's group, and of course their men wanted to come. That was the main thing I can remember about it. The Women's Centre is one of the oldest women's centres in the country. It started in 1974. When I came to Brighton, I didn't immediately think, oh, I want to join Brighton Women's Centre. I'm not even clear I knew it existed. Um, but I, I wanted to get involved in different things, and I started getting involved. There are things that we can do and say and feel and notice about ourselves in women-only environments. That, that we can't do in mixed environments. Because of the fact that sexism and the oppression of women generally is such a huge part of how the world is. Mm -hmm. Because it's so embedded, um, we don't even realise half the time what's going on. And so it's it helps to get out of the kind of environment where, which is more male defined mm -hmm. to actually notice what you're kind of dealing with all the time mm -hmm. when you don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I started to think I might be a lesbian from about the age of 13 or 14 mm -hmm. and it wasn't something I wanted. It cut me off from people yeah. because I was scared what I might let out. Mm -hmm. I'd made assumptions when I was growing up, you know, that if you are um, if you don't particularly like the things that you're supposed to like as a girl and you don't particularly want to be uh, or appear like a sort of stereotype female, then there's an assumption then that you're a lesbian. Mm. And I think I thought that the two went together. I think it would have made quite a bit of difference actually if, if someone had sort of directly said to me mm. that there's no, there's no intrinsic mm. connection. I do remember there was a girl at school, this was at primary school, mm. who was very, looked like a boy to me, um, but she was really into dolls and I couldn't compute because I didn't think that they should go together. This presentation is a personal journey through the butch losses associated with the developing disabling condition. I'm not suggesting here uh, that things are the same for everyone with a neurological disease or even all disabled butchers. This is just my story. My own butch uh, identity first started to show as a kid. I was um, an outdoor football type with um, civil engineering projects on the beach and the playground. I was inspired by Tarzan way before sexuality was even anything that I was uh, consciously aware of. I didn't want to fuck Jane or rescue her. I wanted to be Tarzan. Well, next up came uh, 70s black and white TV and uh, a new obsession with Trampus from the Virginian, which was all um, leather accessories and ropes. At this point, um, a small inch and a half wide leather belt with a big brass buckle came my way um, and uh, I covered it on the back with um, an array of uh, brass studs. Well, after this creative adornment, the belt rarely left the waistband of my ladybird jeans. Except on school days, when I was more or less forced into a skirt. My father, with his customary accidental cruelty, pointed out that my belt was actually a dog collar. No! No! It's not! It's not! It's a belt! It's a belt! No, it's not. Look, there's a D-ring to attach a dog lead right there next to the buckle. Hmm. 
who knew at the time how much this would be indicative of some aspects of my future sexual identity, which have brought much creative and playful joy to myself uh, and others. <laughs> <laughs> no taking pictures of me looking cute. You don't look cute. Is it? It's been my downfall. Looking cute is your downfall. Yeah, because nobody takes me fucking seriously. I don't swear either. Don't swear. Don't take any pictures of me swearing. Swearing and looking cute has been my downfall. <laughs> when I medically retired from my job, because I have multiple sclerosis, so it's a uh, a uh, challenging condition that meant I medically retired from work. A lot of losses around the condition, but also in terms of identity, what am I going to do, what am I doing? And when I wrote the material for the Lesbian Lives Conference, which was where I met Jane, because we were both were at that conference in Dublin, it was expressing concern and, and, and the impact of, of a physically uh, challenging condition and how inaccessible things are in the world, and also how sexual identities disappear along with disability. And this was challenging to me, that, that, that I got this sense of being disappeared in terms of my sexual identity and also people's attitudes towards me changing because, because what they see is how you see me now, which is a person who uses mobility equipment, um, is challenged physically and my brain is much more challenged. I decided in my late 40s to undertake um, a MA in creative media. I did a module that was called Digital Cities. And one of the things that I produced as part of that was a locative trail. There's an app called Action Bound, which, which will locate you according to the coordinates where you're positioned. And I decided to focus it on LGBT people historically, I guess, in Brighton, and some contemporary things too. Um, so we're beginning at the Suicide Memorial Tree. I think this is a lovely location and a lovely thing to do, and actually really important, which says a lot about Brighton, really, and the Parks Department um, to put the tree up and put the information on the interpretive board that is actually naming these are the issues for LGBT people um, who are disproportionately affected by suicide as a community. The thing that affects you is the thing we talked about earlier of being in the closet. So that you damage your relationships with your family, you deprive yourself of a normal social life because when you're young and somebody says, do you want to come to this party or do you want to do this thing, you can't say, can I bring my partner? And your partner doesn't want you to go on your own. So you sort of say no and you don't. So you don't really didn't in those days enter into what you might call normal life. A lot of my life has been involved in in political activism associated with LGBT issues. When I was coming out, which was in the late 80s, early 90s, the legislation that was brought in, Section 28, which was brought in by the, the Tory government and the backdrop of that at the time, you know, being legislated against is not that long ago. I was in the closet for far too long. I'm out now, I'm never going back in that horrible place again. And I had no contact with any of my previous friends from my previous life at all. It was just um, something you, you didn't know how to share with people, so we just disappeared to somewhere else in the country. So I was unhappily married for a long time. I nearly lost custody of my two children. Just the whole way that society works in terms of heterosexism, in terms of all sorts of oppressions, came to the fore. Saying that I must realise that whatever happened I could never teach children. How important that's been to making our lives very much easier, being in Brighton but also being amongst a group of people who you care about and feel care about you. A generation ago, you had the greatest difficulty finding your way into a group like this. I like to think I will hopefully go on being able to be part of everyday life. Sometimes for people of our age, when you're going to need more help and 
How do we see ourselves in that situation? Will there be a gay community as such in the future? I wonder, because I mean, personally, I would miss it terribly. Lesbian is in the general mind a sexualized identity. So if you say lesbian to somebody, they think about lesbian sex because that is their only definition of what a lesbian is. If you say old woman to somebody, they don't think about sex. So there's something in the general sort of cultural imaginary that makes it very difficult to imagine an old woman who is also a lesbian. Um, if you ask an old lesbian, she will say there are lots of things that make you a lesbian apart from just the sex. Um, though many old people are having perfectly happy sex lives as well. Okay. Somebody uh, speak as loud as you think you we will speak normally speak in this a time. Stella, if you do that again, now you're yeah. out of the room. <laughs> like girls, girls. Now, proper conversation. That's enough. Now, if Vices someone's like... trying to talk over the top of someone, speak like you're trying to talk over the top of Jane. No chance. <laughs> I'm Val Bond and uh, I started my life as a normal ish married mother with three well I didn't start there, but with three children. <laughs> and then a little later I decided that perhaps I was going to move in another pathway and it's a long story but I ended up being Betty's partner for the last 32 years. I'm Betty Saunders and I'm Val's partner. Um, I'm a lifelong lesbian, well, uh, since the age of three when I demanded <laughs> to have a lorry with lights as my favourite toy. Are our legs a bit peculiar? My knees have been large in the... Well, they're nice knees. knees. Big. No, there's nothing peculiar. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Slowly, over about seven years, I got myself a reputation. So I'd been told that she um, was into absolutely anything and was spent most of her time bombed out on Valium and alcohol. And the only but, uh, reason I was being so crazy was because the first woman I had fallen in love with decided after a while that she couldn't cope with being a lesbian and we parted. I thought, well, I haven't seen her recently. I'll give her a ring and see how she is. And so um, we had a chat on the phone and then we went to a pub for the evening and spent the whole evening moaning about the people who'd just ditched us. And um, so uh, we then started a friendship and we went out together. We went, um, you know, out walking with the dog, we went to the pictures and we just enjoyed Being time together. together. I told her in the end that I fancied her and she said, no way. Then we went on a one of these booze cruises where you go across from Portsmouth to um, <coughs> Cherbourg to buy your Christmas, um, drinks. Christmas drinks in the duty free. And we're sitting in the restaurant in the ship, which is sort of midships. We sat in this restaurant all the time because it's where the motion of the ship is less. So we were ensconced there and chatting. And I don't know what brought it on, but Val suddenly said to me, what is the difference between an affair and a relationship? And I said, well, it's, um, it's commitment, isn't it? It's, you know, an affair is just a, a, an affair, here today, gone tomorrow, but a, a relationship implies that you're going to um, remain together. So you I have. said, she how then about said, an affair? Will you have an affair with me? And I thought, oh, I don't know. I don't know what came up for me. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I don't want to get hurt. Um, so I said, all right then. <laughs> so you can't find any positive arguments about the women to put in your notes, which is, which is true. And we must make some. That's what we're going to do, isn't it?
oikein mä eikä se monesti positiivinen siis on kauhuin niin. Because of just yourself, you actually are standing on the shoulders of so many people before you. Mm-hmm. And I feel incredibly grateful to be able to walk down the street with my partner. Yes. I guess for me as a 34-year-old lesbian, I have nothing to aspire to because I've, I don't know any older lesbians. I've never seen any older lesbians in a relationship. I don't know older couples. So I think for me, it just gave me a sense of excitement, to something to look forward to. But you're in different places. And so I'm intrigued by that because I don't know enough about it and I want to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm astounded really really that you're saying that you don't know, didn't know, older lesbians. Why? Um, why should, well, just there are so many of us around. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not represented. Culturally. We actually don't know about each other either. We have a lot in common, and that's despite what we define ourselves as, you know, the labels. <laughs> the difficult experience and the joyful experience of being queer, lesbian, gay, trans, non binary. I feel honoured to the opportunity to connect with so many of the intersections because somebody's making a film about it and doing this. So to, to, to Janet, by the way, who introduced me to Jay. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's generational carry on if you are. <laughs> <laughs>